Praise God. You know there's a soberness and a seriousness about the things of God, but uh, it's easy for the devil to turn things around in our minds and make them sound like work, uh, make it sound like religious duty. And that's not what God's after. God is after a, uh, the reproduction of his life. And, uh, you know, something the Lord is, is working on me about. I, I appreciate so much uh, the service we had the other night at the meeting where Brother Bob Brown got up and talked about the joy of the Lord. I mean, if, if the things that we're talking about t this morning don't have that element about them, they are just religious duty. I mean, you think about a relationship with God as, oh, I've got to pray, I've got to think about this, I've got to, I've got to, it gets exhausting after a while. It's a relationship. Yes. It's just simply a, a faith contact and, a, and an engagement with God because where, where do we get the ability, the wherewithal to do any of the stuff that's been said? I mean, we can exhort and, we, and well, we should. But you know, we need to be, if we have a relationship with God, not only are we going to be enabled to do the things that we ought to do, but they're going to, there's going to be an element of joy. I mean, there is no joy outside of being in the center of his will and, and experiencing him. And I just, uh, I just want to share very, very briefly the, uh, the thought, and I guess it comes from uh, again from the vine and the branches in John chapter 15. We have this picture of a relationship. And again, the relationship is not one where I'm, oh God, I, did I do it just right? Did I say it just right? Oh God, have I, did, I forgot I, I was thinking about my food. I should have been praying. I should have been thinking, you know. So like I said, that, that's exhausting. That's not what the Lord is looking after or wanting. I believe that, that we see this modeled in Jesus. There was simply such a connection of faith with his father that he expected. I mean, first of all, his will was yielded. His life was given but he just simply depended on his father to live in him and, to, and not just, you know, this here, but it was this. And that's what God is wanting out of every one of us. It's a relationship where it's not just you and Jesus having this joyous time together, but it's you and it's Jesus in you coming forth and expressing himself in all of his wonder and all of his joy to each other. My God, we, could, we can make this such a, we can turn sober into somber, and that's not what we want. I, I just, I, I'm so, uh, well, I was going to say, use the word jazzed. I guess that's, you know, kind of a carnal word. But I, I'm thrilled with things I see the Lord doing, but I don't want to, you know, I don't want it to get down into the realm of, of religious duty and, and I've got to be this, I've got to be that. What a joy it is just to let him live. It's not a striving. It's a yielding. It's not a struggle, it's a believing. He that believes in me, uh, there'll be, a, there'll be a living waters flow. I'm, I'm paraphrasing the scripture from John 7, but it says, this spoke he of the Spirit. There's a, there's a believing, or, Lord, I want you, I, but not only do I want you, I expect you. I'm believing you, Lord, to live in me, to enable me to do the things that you want me to do, and I can do them, because not because I'm, able in myself, but because you're in me. Praise God. That's a whole different way to look at any of this that we're, that's being talked about. We need to be just full of his life. That makes all the difference. My God, if I got to do all this stuff, let's just turn the lights out and go home. We're not, none of us is up to that. Uh, that. That can be drudgery if you get, let the devil cause you to look at it that way. But that's not it at all. But Jesus was talking about... Uh, you know, the, the relationship, remain in me, and I, and I will remain in you. That's not a, oh, God, i gotta just, I got to hang on for dear life. Oh, God, it's just a, Lord, live in me. Lord, I'm, I'm just, I'm resting, I'm yielding. It's all of these, these things that bring rest. They don't bring, you know, this kind of wearing yourself out kind of effort. Praise God. Did the Lord come to give us peace or not? Yeah. But we, we make it so much work sometimes, and, and there's, certainly there's an effort when you're talking about resisting the devil, but my God, it's not a self-effort to be, self-effort to live up, self, to live up to something, a self-effort to qualify before we expect God to, to like us. I mean, it's none of that. Jesus paid it all. 
He has done everything necessary to cleanse me. If his life alone can, can cleanse me, can enable me, can flow into those deep areas of my life that need help. And there's plenty of them here. But boy, he doesn't want it to stop there, does he? What does the life flow into a vine to do? To produce fruit. It doesn't, it's just not going back into the, into the vine. It's going forth out through the vine and fruit happens. That's what God is, is desiring. And I, I see more of it. But I see where uh, we just need to learn how to focus and, and every one of us be, uh, the word that's been used lately is engaged. God wants you to have a relationship. This isn't just for a special few. This is for everybody who knows Christ. Man, if we have the kind of relationship he has purchased for us, there will be such a life and such a joy that people who don't know him are going to notice the difference. And they're going to say, I want that. I don't have that. Lord, there's an emptiness here. Why? Why do I not have that? If it gets down in the realm of religious activity and duty, anybody can do that. We don't need that. We need reality. And I, that's, what I, that's what I desire in my life. But, you know, down, down in verse 8, he says, This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. There's a, there's a change when there's a relationship with God, there is the change that's been mentioned this morning, and it will, it will express itself in our lives, in our individual lives, in our corporate life. We're going to see Christ come and make a difference in us. I, I desire that. I sense my need of it. But, but you know, so many times I, I think I have approached with, with an, almost a religious, anxious seriousness. You know what I'm talking about? Where it's just... Uh, i got to try harder kind of thing. But that's not it. You know, it's letting go. Letting God have his way. And anything else is just work. Jesus did the work. He wants us to come to him and find rest. Come to me, all weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. How do you get it? He gives it. Praise God. What a glorious Lord we have. How wonderful he is. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Do you know you're loved? Now remain in my love. If you love my commands, if you obey my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. Now, well, actually, I'll go ahead. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is what the... This is what it should look like. If we have the relationship with God that he desires, there's going to be a joy about us. Man, we're going to want to get up in the morning and say, praise God, here's another day. And say, oh, good Lord, it's morning. <laughs> sometimes we're tempted to do that. Sometimes we probably do do that. But the Lord wants us to have a, a joy. And even in the midst of all that he went through, that was what carried him. He was so connected to what God was about that he was able to see past the stuff of life and all the hardness of people's hearts and have a joy. If God can fill us with that kind of joy from a real relationship with him, everybody here can have that. Everybody here can be, become one of the wells of salvation that the, that the prophet talks about. 